The Vedic reaction is a good reaction. It's I like it because it's the opposite of the osanolysis. But when they actually present a problem to you, they have it in two steps. Sometimes they want you to make the e-lead from scratch and then react it with the carbonyl. So we're going to cover the two steps. And making the e-lead, the e-lead has the carbon-phosphorus double bond. And we make it through a an SN2 reaction. So we take trif triphenylphosphine, it's a good nucleophile. We're going to do an SN2 reaction. So when you do an SN2 reaction, make sure that you have either a methyl halide or a primary halide. Those would be best. A secondary halide can work. Just make sure that you use a, an aprotic solvent to, to do the best you can for an SN2 reaction. So the phosphorus with the lone pair is going to attack, in this case it's going to attack the benzylic carbon and it's going to displace the bromide and the product of this right here, it's not our ileid yet so now we have the triphenylphosphine attached to the benzylic carbon which is a CH2 and I'm going to stick out one of the hydrogens up and we have a phenyl ring attached to it the phosphorus right here has a positive charge, so we need a counter ion, but the carbon is not negative yet, so the carbon is not my counter ion. I have a bromine, so the bromine is going to be the counter ion right now for my positive phosphorus. The next step of the reaction, I need to make the carbon negative, because that's going to be our elid. I'm going to need a really strong base and normally what we use is butyl lithium. So the butyl lithium is going to deprotonate my carbon and it's going to leave the two, hydro the two electrons on the carbon. So the product of this reaction right here, the deprotonation is our elite because now I have a positive phosphorus but more importantly than that I have a negative carbon so I have a good nucleophile right here and if you were to draw the mechanism of the reaction, it's much better to actually do it with the negative carbon, but there's a resonance form in which you put the electrons, the lone pair of electrons on the carbon, in between the carbon and the phosphorus, so you do have the double bond right here. And if you were to actually just remember the reaction, we are going to put this double bonded carbon together with the double bonded carbon of the carbonyl. The carbonyl has to be a ketone or an aldehyde. They both do this reaction uh, really well. So let's see, what do we want? Um, let's just do a ketone. We have been using a 3-propanone for a while, so let's just use this ketone and we're going to add to it our ELI that we prepared in the previous step. Since I'm not doing the mechanism, I'm going to go straight to the product. I am going to just use it with the double bond between the carbon and the phosphorus. And what we're doing is that we're putting this double bonded carbon together with this double bonded carbon. So when you draw it, put the backbone of your ketone minus the oxygen and we're going to attach this carbon to where the oxygen used to be. And this reaction is very versatile on the things that you can have attached to your elid. So if you want it, you can have an ester hanging off or more double bonds up there, or in my case, a phenyl ring. But the important thing about this is that you know where the double bond is going to be. There's no need to worry about more substituted double bond or less substituted double bond because you're putting the two carbons together so you know from the get-go where the double bond is going to end up with.